My name is Edwin Code. I'm the CEO and founder of Solar Plaza, and it's a pleasure to host this webinar with for you. Um, we're going to talk about the Dutch PV market, which is flourishing. Cumulative installed P solar PV uh, capacity has reached almost three gigawatts in the Netherlands. And while we're talking, maybe we have reached it already. So uh, experts believe that this market could even grow to about 20 gigawatts in less than 10 years. So what's happening in the Dutch market? Why is it flourishing? Well, there is, first of all, a net metering program, which is stimulating the residential market. And there are many cooperative initiatives for renewable energy and PV. Moreover, uh, however, the SDE plus, which will be the key topic of today, the SDE subsidy led to thousands of approved applications for CNI projects, um, ranging from 15 kilowatts to over 100 megawatts. The SDE plus um, is, a, is, is the abbreviation of stimulating Duurzame Energy, encouraging sustainable energy production is an operating grant. And um, producers receive a financial compensation during 15 years for the renewable energy they generate. The SDE subsidy scheme is already running since 2008, and the budget, like in 2017, uh, again this year, is about is 12 billion euros. But this is for renewable energy, and we will hear more about this later on, what part will be covered for, by PV. Goal of the webinar is to provide you with some more information on the Dutch market and the SDE uh, subsidy scheme, providing you a quick overview of the landscape and the state of the market and incentives. We'll have room for questions, and I will explain to you later how you can join uh, and send in your questions. More in-depth information and experience, of course, will be discussed at the 10th edition of the leading Dutch PV conference, the Solar Future NL, which will be held the 17th of May in Utrecht. Um, all right, let's get started with a few slides from my side. Um, first, some, some small advertisement from Solar Plaza. Maybe you've heard of us. Uh, we were established in 2004, and in the meantime, we organize more than 100 events across the globe. In more than 30 countries, and we have a network of about 60,000 people um, globally. Um, our upcoming events include a mission next week to the Sahel region. Uh, we have events coming up in Argentina and Nigeria, the 17th of May in the Netherlands, the Solar Future Conference, and we have other events coming up, like the Asset Management Conference in Tokyo in 24th of May, and also maybe interesting uh, for you, a Solar Market Parity Europe uh, Conference in the 5th of June in Milan at the airport in Italy. Um, so this webinar is organized in anticipation of the Dutch uh, Conference, the 10th edition already. And looking at the uh, preliminary registration so far for this event, it's uh, likely that this event is going to be sold out um, or is going to so sell out. Um, we see the ticket curves uh, running faster than ever before in the previous editions. So 10th edition with all the leading stakeholders uh, um, that are acting in the Dutch PV market, they will be there. A lot of investors, financiers, the project developers, consultants, utilities, etc. That is a nice opportunity for join this, to join this show. Um, and we already have 15 uh, supporting partners and sponsors um, for this event. You can find more, of course, on the website, the solarfuture.nl. And uh, it's good to know for you that the early bird price of 595 euros um, will end the 1st of April. And uh, because it's a special edition, it's the 10th edition, we'll organize a barbecue and a gigawatt party. And this is included in the price. So it's a unique offer. Uh, that we're ha having this this time. Good. We're talking about today about the Dutch market, and uh, just to show you this graph, the market is growing and it's grown continuously since uh, 2009. Um, 2017 was already a record year in terms of new install capacity with over 850 megawatts, and this year could even be much more, maybe over a gigawatt or maybe 1.5 gigawatts, as some people will, uh, are, are stating. So, a very interesting market with also a shift in, um, in, in market segmentation. Um, in the past, residential was the leading market segment, but nowadays, as you can see from this 10, top 10 of uh, existing largest solar projects in the Netherlands, uh, since 2017, the biggest project is a 30 megawatt uh, project in Delft Cell. You might think that is big, but what's coming up is even uh, uh, slightly higher. Uh, this is a top 10 of the announced big projects in the Netherlands. 
And uh, you can see that there are even two projects announced of over 100 megawatts. And these have been granted with SDE subsidy. So all the reason more to ex hear more about this uh, subsidy scheme. Um, that's what we're going to talk about in this webinar. You can see the program after my little introduction. We'll have an explanation on the status of the SDE incentive for PV by Robert van Otterlo. He is the advisor at RVO. We'll have time for Q&A with him. You can send in your questions. Come back to that later. After that, we'll have the chairman of the Holland Solar, the Solar Industry Association in the Netherlands, and he will talk about the opportunities and challenges in our Dutch market. And after his presentation, again, we will have some time for Q&A, and then Robert is still available um, to answer your questions as well. Practically, uh, on the right side of your screen and when you're logged in, you, you should see a menu and a, a, a box where you can post your questions. You can send them to us. We will try to um, answer and, and uh, discuss as many of the questions as, as possible that will come in. Uh, feel free to send them, but don't be disappointed if we cannot uh, treat you and, and discuss your question because uh, some of the, our webinars uh, questions are uh, just rolling in uh, and uh, then we have too many to, to discuss. But feel free to, to drop these questions in the chat box. Um, good to know is that this complete webinar will be recorded. So you can, uh, it will be made available for free on, on the website. So you can forward that to colleagues that have missed out this opportunity. And the uh, presentation slides will be made available as well. Good. Uh, part of this uh, webinar is a possibility to do an, an online uh, poll question with you, all the listeners. And um, so we'll do the first poll question. And you should see now um, in your screen uh, the question popping up. And I would kindly ask you to cooperate and uh, work with us and uh, fill in what are your planned activities in the Dutch PV market. You can select one of these uh, uh, options, either project development, EPC, um, or maybe you're looking for investment opportunities in Dutch markets, providing services, supplying equipment. Uh, we are curious to see how many, uh, what the votes will be and what your main interests will be. Uh, I see already some results coming. Um, almost all of you have responded. We'll wait for a couple more seconds to see the results, to show you the results, which is pretty interesting. Although not completely surprising, um, most of you are interested in project development and investing opportunities. And um, then, of course, the providing services. Uh, it's definitely visible that the Dutch market is very attractive for foreign participa uh, participants, um, as uh, we saw with the registrations for this webinar, um, which is in English on purpose. There is a lot of interest from foreign companies to enter the Dutch market. and. Uh, be active in this unique situation. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so myself, I'm busy in the Dutch market for more than 23 years. And I can assure you this has been the most uh, yeah, attractive period ever in the 23 years. This is the most booming situation ever. So I'm not really surprised that so many of you are interested to enter the Dutch market. All right, thank you for your cooperation. We'll come back with another poll question later on. Let's continue with the show and uh, let's go to the first speaker. Um, his name is Robert van Otterlo. Uh, he works for the Rijksdienst voor Ondernemend Nederland. Um, so it's a government agency. And he's working for that agency since 2008 as an advisor for the SDE subsidy uh, regulatory framework. Uh, he studied renewable energy. And his presentation will be the explanation and status of the SDE uh, incentive for PV. Let's see if Robert is there and get his uh, presentation on just be one moment be with uh, remain with us and see his presentation is on and we give the the mouse to robert let's see if we can hear him as well uh, one second robert are you there hi edwin yeah i'm here thank you yes. okay um good well robert uh, please go ahead your presentation is ready you have the mouse on the control so you can uh, start your presentation all right um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, as Edwin already said, my name is uh, Robert van Otterlo. I work for the uh, Netherlands Enterprise Agency, um, specific for the SDE Plus uh, scheme. I will try to get to the next slide. Oh. Does it work with the, you can, do, yeah. 
Yeah, it's working. Yeah. I had to find the button. Um, first of all, I would more would like to uh, broadly um, have, uh, talk about the STE Plus uh, cornerstones. If you have any sp specific questions about the STE, please uh, do so and ask me in the Q and A's later. Um, well, the first one is that there's one integral budget ceiling for S for every SDE application round. One budget ceiling has been determined for all categories together. Uh, the budget is distributed according to the principle first come, first serve. Grant application involving the low, lowest production cost base amount can apply earlier. Um, then we have different phases and phase openings. The SDE plus opens in phases. Each phase has a maximum phase amount. This maximum phase amount increases for each phase. For each technology, there's a maximum base amount and a maximum number of full load hours per year. For solar PV projects, the maximum full load hours are 950 per year. Um, a maximum base amount, that's point three. The SDE Plus has a maximum base amount. Technologies that are able to produce renewable energy for this sum or less can be eligible for, the, for a grant. For the spring round, solar PV has two categories. A category for projects with a capacity larger than 50 kilowatt peak up until uh, one megawatt peak. This category has a maximum base amount of 11.2 cents per kilowatt hour. The period within operating must start within a one and a half year after the subsidy is granted. Um, then we have a second category that's for projects larger than uh, than a megawatt peak. There is no cap, so you can make them as large as you want. This category has a maximum base amount of 10.7 cents per kilowatt hour. For this category, operating must start within three years and within one year. Um, you require to submit to RVO a copy of your contracts. The solar PV categories are open for installations connected to a large scale energy grid connection. And then we have the free category. Um, you can apply for a lower subsidy than the maximum base amount. Such ap applications are set to fall within the free category. Renewable energy producers or those aiming to be renewable energy producers can apply for subsidies in this category for amounts equal to multiples of a tenth of a cent per kilowatt hour. So if you have a business case and you want to apply for um, a large scale uh, solar PV installation that's, that's uh, larger than one megawatt um, and in the business case, um, the calculations say you need about 2.1 or 2.2 cents per kilowatt hour. You can apply for the subsidy in the free category. The amount of subsidy applied for in the free category is lower than the maximum phase amount. So it, it's always lower than, uh, than the 10.7 cents and it's higher than the base energy price. Then in uh, 2018, um, there's been made a different amount for grid delivery and own use. Um, the correction amounts published for grid delivery and own use, the correction amount is higher for own use because of a higher financial advantage. When you apply for subsidy, you can fill in the application form how many of the production is own use. The advantage for the first year will be based on this information. The maximum, maximum subsidy is granted based on the base energy amount for grid delivery. This means that the sufficient budget will always be reserved. All right, in this, uh, in this slide, um, you can see that uh, the budgets from the, the uh, last years. Uh, in 2012, we had about 1.7 billion. And you can see that the budget increases a lot. Um, 2016, that was the first year. We had two rounds in one year for a budget of 4 billion. And the second round, uh, there was 5 billion. 
billion. And then for 2017, we had two rounds for 6 billion each. So there was in 2017, we had in the spring round and we had an autumn round and the total budget was 12 billion. Uh, what you also can see in this, um, in this diagram is that the, um, uh, the budget that goes to solar PV project increases a lot. The first really successful year for solar PV, for the large scale solar PV was 2014. Almost one gigawatt uh, was granted to um, uh, solar projects. Then 2015 was uh, not a really good year, but then you see what happens in 2016. There's a lot of budget going to uh, the solar PV projects and 2017, you can only see here the uh, the spring round, the results of the spring round, and you can see that almost half of the budget goes to the um, solar PV projects. And I think it, it will be the same for the autumn round in 2017. Um, in this diagram, I um would like to let you know that that um when you look at 2014 the uh, when you apply for the subsidy the operation must start within three years um now we have a different operation must start for projects uh, up to a megawatt in, within one and a half year but in 2014 15 16 and 17 it was three years so you see that for 2014 about half of the um, capacity that was granted is, is built already. Then one third uh, has never been built, so uh, we, got, uh, we got it back. Um, and then what you see in yellow still has to be built. And when you look at the autumn round, and of course the spring round, and the autumn round of 2017, again, it's not in, in this diagram, you see that there's a lot of uh, capacity that still needs to be built. So there's a lot of work to do. Um, yeah, what's happening and about to ha happen? The autumn round 2017, we are still working on it. Um, what we um, uh, did so far that almost 1.3 megawatts uh, uh, gigawatt, sorry, is already be, been granted. So that's that's for approximately uh, one and a half billion. Uh, we still got one and a half billion um, budget that needs to be granted to the different projects. So there will be a lot of solar, a lot of megawatts extra that will be granted with the autumn round 2017. At the moment, the spring round of 2018 is open, so you can apply for the for the subsidy. We're in the third phase now, so almost at the end. Um, the budget is again six million for this round. Um, and uh, so, if you want to apply for subsidy, you still got a chance if you apply for it uh, at this moment. The um, last phase will end next week, so you have to hurry a little bit. The autumn round 2018, uh, the Ministry of uh, Economic Affairs um, announced that he would uh, make another 6 billion available for the autumn round. So again, for the autumn round, there's a lot of budget um, and also for solar PV, I guess. The lessons learned. Um, what you see, and, and uh, mostly with uh, foreign uh, parties, is that when you apply for the subsidy, it's uh, digital, and uh, you need a digital signature. AI canning is, is how we call it in, uh, in the Netherlands. Um, the companies that provide the AI canning, the digital signature, uh, they will take about a week, uh, maybe longer, to uh, uh, to get your digital signature. So um yeah do that on time so that you have it on time and you can apply for the subsidy uh, yeah what we see a lot is that the feasibility study um is is not complete and when uh, the feasibility study is not complete 
um, then you don't set your budget claim on the day you uh, applied for the subsidy. So it's very important to get a complete application. Uh, so therefore, pay a lot of attention to the feasibility study and uh, all the other contracts uh, that, that need to be uh, put to the uh, application. Uh, the feasibility study is uh, necessary when you apply for a subsidy for a project that's larger than 500 kilowatt peak. Or if you have uh, different projects on, on different roof, roofs and uh, the total uh, capacity that you want to place on the roofs is larger than 500 kilowatt peaks. Uh, you also have to put on a feasibility study at the moment. Uh, what we've seen in the last round, in the autumn round of 2017, that for a lot of uh, land projects, um, there was a temporary permit. Uh, the permit has a, um, yeah, a maximum time of 10 years, and it's mostly used to apply for the SDE subsidy. It's not possible to build the installation with a temporary permit, so make sure that you have the right permits for your installation. Uh, yeah, what's also possible, not a lot of uh, parties uh, uh, do it, but if you um, uncertainties uh, with the feasibility study, uh, you can always contact us or we can make an appointment and you come, can come to our office and we can talk through your project and um, see if everything that is necessary is available. It doesn't work anymore. Can I go to the next? Ah, there it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you for listening. Uh, we got a lot of English information on our website. I don't know if the hyperlinks work on this uh, sheet, um, but um, yeah, we got an uh, English brochure that's uh, step by step says how the SDE works and and uh, what the feasibility study. Um, yeah, and, and what kind of uh, environmental permits uh, you need. So you can download the brochure and please contact us if you have any questions. Okay, Robert, thank you very much for a very clear presentation. Um, thanks so much. A uh, few questions came in. Uh, first of all, I have a question uh, from my side. So what is your best estimate? How many megawatts will be built uh, from the 2016 and 17 uh, projects that have been granted the subsidy? Um, is there anything to say, like in percentages, uh, what from the past? Like, is it like if it, if you take like a forty to fifty percent of the projects that have been granted will be realized? How many megawatts were are supposed to be built in in the coming one to two years from those previous rounds? Well, up to now, I think there are about. Um, five gigawatts that, that has been granted um, with uh, SDE. Yeah, and of course, not, not everything will be built. Uh, you can see it um, in the, in the um, a diagram for the 2014 14 round. Uh, yeah. One gigawatt was granted, and I think 30% of that is now uh, taken back by, by the RVO. So, I don't know. It, it, it would be nice if we got a 17% um, realized from the 2014 round, and I hope it will be higher for the for the coming years. So if it's so, take, let's take 70% uh, of the five gigawatts that have been granted. So that is three and a half gigawatts that still have to be built uh, for projects granted in 2016 and 17, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah. that's a huge number, and then on top of that will be the new applications coming in uh, for in the 2018 rounds. Yeah, there's there's yet uh, again a 12 billion that's uh, that's available. Yeah, and uh, you see it with the the larger projects um, uh, above the 50 uh, megawatts. Um, you can um, see them coming uh, with the permits, so you know the, in the in the pipeline, you know. Um, you can see what budget claim they will um, do, so, and that's more for the geothermal, uh, the um, wind parks. 
and the image is that uh, the uh, large wind parks are already uh, applied for the SDE and have their um, mm -hmm. um, have the, they're already granted. So I think there will be more room for solar PV in the 2018 round. Okay. So there, they have quite uh, there quite some questions came in. Uh, Robert, let's go through them. Uh, maybe first with an easy one. Uh, do you know anything about the the budget for next year? Will there be an SDE for next year? Um, yeah, I think so, but it's not been announced yet. So oh. now it's it's really hard to to say with any certainty that that there will be an SDE, but. Um, um, it's Everybody a political decision, right? Yeah, exactly. It's a political decision. Yeah. But uh, the odds uh, show that it's, uh, you know, it, it might be very feasible uh, or um, expected that, that there will be a continuation of the, of the very successful scheme. Um, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, all, the, all the different uh, parties, uh, political, uh, the market, could, um, everybody involved want a very consistent um, policy. So, mm -hmm. it, I don't know. I expect that there will be just another uh, SDE round next year. Yeah. Of course, you cannot say because you're working uh, for the government agency. So we we cannot uh, hold you on this, uh, keep you on this uh, promise. But there is uh, all the more likelihood that it will will happen. Okay. Let, let's go to the next question. Um, are there any plans to give higher tariffs for floating solar? Um, yeah, there have been um, ECN um, in, in their advice to the Ministry of Economic Affairs and, and Climate uh, in 2016. Uh, um, they uh, wanted to, to um, get a category for floating solar to get more full load hours uh, for those systems. Yeah. Um, but up until now, we don't have an, a separate category for the um, uh, solar systems on water. But there, there's, there's been talking about it. Yeah. So it could be that there will be a, a different category for it. Yeah. And maybe in line with this question, um, because there is a, a max of 915 50 uh, hours of uh, what we call in the Netherlands for lost uren. Um, yeah. Is there any plans to uh, add trackers to the program uh, and then work with a different amount? Um, yeah, well, the, the, it could be that there will be a category for uh, solar on water yeah, with more uh, um, more full load hours. Um, or it also could be that um, uh, using trackers will give you extra full load hours as well. Yeah. Uh, 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 both scenarios have been uh, talked about, and um, ECN talked, uh, advice to the ministry for both uh, systems to get more full load hours. Yeah. And okay. Um, much more detailed question. Um, and on the banking, uh, is it possible? Uh, so in case of uh, low PV yields, that the SDE payment will last longer than one additional year. Uh, per, so maybe uh, maybe like 16 years. Um, yeah, and that uh, with the banking system, I guess. Um, yeah. No, um, uh, when you use the banking system, you can um, uh, save the production that's subsidizable that you didn't make in a year. Uh, you can put it in, a, in an account. And uh, after 15 years, you can get 12 months extra. So no more than 12 months. Okay, okay. Um, a negative market price. So do negative market price have an effect on the, uh, an impact on the SDE banking scheme? If so, what is the impact? What is the effect? Um, yeah, there is, uh, when there are negative energy prices for more than six hours and your project is larger than 500 kilowatt peak, um, uh, we can't uh, subsidize the production that's made in that period. Um, you also can't um, uh, bank the, that, um, uh, subs uh, that production that's made in that six hours. It's not, not possible to use in the banking system. Okay. Um, and what 
what, what what will happen and by the way with the budget that is not used um, and so if projects are not being re not realized is that budget being uh, reserved for next year or is is it going uh, get does it get lost uh no we got one um uh budget in the netherlands that that is that comes out of the uh, ode um opslag duurzame energie and that's that's paid by every citizen in in the netherlands um and um from uh, uh, that budget the sde is financed um if projects are not realized the budget goes back to that um yeah the budget for renewable energy in the netherlands so it will be used for renewable energy, uh, but it's up to the uh, Ministry of Economic Affairs and um, um, and Climate to make uh, the decision on how high the budget will be. Yeah, and there are there are more subsidy systems that are uh, financed out of the ODE. So you got the renewable energy. That's more. Um, uh, that's that's a, a, a different uh, subsidizing system uh you got the esde so that's more for heat production um and it's all financed out of the same uh budget ah okay okay so uh, let's do a final question before we go to the next speaker um so what do you expect um the the government will do will they correct the base price uh in order to affect the, the market value of the guarantees of origin um yeah that's that's uh, um, a difficult question um i don't know if if the government uh, will do it um it's not a um, an issue at the moment also not at the ministry of um, economic affairs um so at the moment the the um, guarantees of origin uh won't have any influence on the correction amount so that the um Uh, it's not the, the the base price that will be corrected, but it's the correction amount. Um, right. But um, uh, but in the regulations, there is a possibility that if the um, uh, um, guarantees of origin uh, get a value, um, they can take it into account uh, when they calculate the uh, correction amounts. So the possibility okay, is there. Possibility is there, but there is no sign. There is no sign that it will happen on, in the short term. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Robert, for answering all these, these questions. Uh, please stay on the line so that later on, after the uh, presentation, next presentation, uh, if some questions come in that are relevant for you, that you can answer them. For now, thank you very much for your uh, contribution. And let's go over to the next uh, speaker. First, we will do a poll question and. Um, we will see the poll question now popping up in your screen. And um, please answer this one to see what uh, you see as the biggest challenges for uh, going into the Dutch market. And um, we picked four options for you to choose from. And I'm curious to see what you see as the biggest challenges um, entering the Dutch market. Will that be the hands to build projects? Will that be finding a suitable Dutch partner? or understanding the Dutch incentive system, or is there another challenge that you might see? Responses are coming in. And I see, let's see, we have uh, almost two thirds of the people answered the question. So, yeah, I think we're gonna make the, the results visible on screen. So, that's very interesting and also good news to the and a nice bridge to the next speaker that um, most of you are looking for a suitable Dutch partner and um, it's great to see that we'll have our next speaker the chairman of the Holland Solar Industry Association and he can um, yeah help you with finding a partner because uh, they have a lot of um, solar businesses from the Netherlands being part of Holland Solar um, yeah, Barsma, he is also director and senior advisor of Econet and the CEO of Crystal Q. He studied pharmacy, but uh, ended up in solar as a lot of people uh, shifted away from their uh, original study um, once they got addicted to the virus of solar energy. 
He is a member of the board. He was a member of the board of the Faculty of Mathematics and Nature Science uh, during his studies. He's going to give a presentation about uh, the opportunities and challenges in, in the Dutch PV market, his vision um, on what's happening in the Netherlands. Yap, can you hear me? Let's see. Yap, can you hear me? Yes, can you, yes. I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, welcome. And uh, we'll have put your presentation on screen. I'll yeah. Use the mouse and, and get started with your presentation. Please go ahead, Jap. Yeah, thank you, Edwin. Um, it's strange to see all my old jobs, but I'm already 10 years active in uh, solar energy already, also in foreign countries. At the moment, I'm president of uh, the Dutch Association for Solar Energy, as uh, Edwin said, and uh, I want to tell you something about the Dutch uh, market uh, for the next uh, four years. And first of all, maybe it's good to know that we have several markets. We have, of course, the residential market, and uh, as uh, most of you maybe know, it's net metering driven at the moment, but it will be changed in the next few years. And uh, for apartment blocks, there will also come another uh, uh, incentive, uh, and it will be, I think, very similar to the residential market. But we have also a small commercial roof market, and that's uh, typically fiscality uh, driven, this, uh, the AIA subsidy. But uh, the subject of, uh, of this uh, meeting is especially the SE driven market. And then we recognize two markets, the rooftop commercial market and the solar parks, of course. And uh... Oh, yes. Sorry. Um, just to close a little bit more closer to the solar and the SE plus, um, as uh, Robert told us, it's uh, the groot gebruikers aansluiting. That means uh, uh, the connection has to be more than three times 80 ampere. Uh, there's no maximum, but a, a 15 kilowatt peak is, uh, let's say, the minimum. I'm quite sure that will be changed in the next year. It will go higher. Um, I, uh, the maximum already mentioned by uh, Robert, maybe it's important to know that there is no environmental permit necessary for rooftop installations. Uh, that's uh, something typically for Holland, I guess. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, for installations, uh, more than 50, 100 kilowatt peak, a feasibility study is necessary also for combined rooftop installations. Uh, field installations, solar parks, need an environmental permit, and this has to be definitive. There's not a preliminary permit, and that's an important point, of course, because that is uh, quite often a, um, a, a, a rate-limiting uh, factor. Uh, and, of course, there has to be an agreement uh, with the owner uh, of, uh, of the roof or, uh, or the land. And um, as also discussed already, there will be a, um, a uh, first project in PV on water in 2017. There are some smaller projects, but there are also in preparation some uh, bigger projects. Um, a lot of people ask me, what, is the, what was the game changer in the Dutch PV market? Because it changed so dramatically in uh, 2017. And the most important reason, PV has become more competitive uh, uh, in comparison with the other renewables because it's an open system of, of tendering and uh, there's uh, become more room for, for PV because the, the, the price was lower. But there's also a big awareness in Holland that uh, it's necessary to have also large PV installation in, uh, in the mix of uh, renewables we need in 2050 when we want to be uh, independent of uh, fossil fuels. Of course, the increasing SE budget was an important thing because uh, the, uh, the other techniques are uh, uh, lower in price. This, therefore, there needs to be more budget that uh, PV can have a chance to, uh, to uh, uh, be approved. Of course, the low finance costing costs are very important, but also uh, there is a lot uh, to do with our competitors. Uh, to, uh, to say, uh, biomass coal firing was uh, has reached the appointed maximum. There's, there will be no biomass coal firing anymore in the SDE, and um, wind on land have difficulties in acceptance. But also the big projects uh, appointed uh, some years ago, a uh, total of six gigawatt, is. Uh, already uh, approved now in uh, 2017 i think the most last projects are 
some will uh, go uh, for a project in 2018, but I agree with Robert that there will be a good chance for uh, solar in 2018. And um, it's also good to say that uh, there are no easy possibilities for geothermal energy in, in Holland, like in countries like Turkey and Iceland, for example. We have uh, more difficulties to come uh, to the uh, heat, what is uh, uh, enough to uh, to uh, have an uh, uh, importance in the uh, uh, renewable heat. Here you see, and it's a little other uh, view on the uh, applications on 2007, the first round, this is the, the uh, uh, spring round. And you can see when you look to megawatt, uh, solar is far out uh, the biggest, more, more interesting maybe is to, to look to the uh, budget uh, and that's about the production. Uh, and you can see even then solar was in 2017, the first half year, uh, for the first time, the biggest in the, uh, of the different uh, techniques. Um, I, here you can see for the second round what uh, was uh, applied uh, in, in this round. And you, the, the orange one is what has been approved already. It's the same amount as mentioned by Robert. It's about 1.26. Uh, gigawatt, but there is a lot of uh, projects are in progress, and it's uh, still not sure if they can have uh, a budget uh, this uh, half year. But uh, when we look to the uh, budget again, you can see here the different techniques, and at the uh, at the right side you see the total, and uh, you can also see the maximum budget of six uh, billion euro. And you can also see that at least around 0.6 gigawatt will be added to the 1.3 uh, for the first uh, for the for the uh, already approved uh, uh, installations. But uh, I guess it will be somewhere between two and 2.3, 2.4. Because again, the first half year 2.4, uh, and the second half year. I guess more than two gigawatt. It makes a total of 4.4 for solar, and uh, that's remarkable, uh, I guess. I can't go to the next slide. Uh, I can't go. Okay. And another important point is, of course, what are the expectations are about political developments? And uh, it's also for the long term, of course, what will do the market in the next uh, three, four, five years. And um, I can say there is a broad support for solar PV as a contribution in the energy transition. And um, there is even a climate law announced with 90, 49 uh, a percent of reduction of green gas, house gases in 2030. And a climate law means that there will be a, a great majority in Parliament that uh, uh, support this law that makes it also independent of change in government, etc. because let's say about three quarters of the Parliament will uh, um, uh, support this climate law. And that's important, of course, as a background for the long-term uh, development in Holland. And again, like we had also in the uh, recent past, that we will have a new climate and energy agreement uh, bringing together all stakeholders, including industry, unions, energy sector, NGOs, business and renewables. And that worked very well the last period of time. And uh, this is in preparation now for 2030. That will also for the long term, let's say, a commitment of all parties to go to this 49 reduction of greenhouse gases in which solar PV plays a, a, a significant uh, a role. Um, and on the other hand, we see a development in Holland of a lot of electrification of heat and transport uh, as, a, as a part of the solution. Just let's say there will be a big uh, grow in demand for electricity in, in Holland, uh, as you may, maybe know, uh, we are one of the front runners for um, uh, the, the EV, the electrical vehicles, 
and uh, uh, let's say there are also uh, 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 is a big ambition to uh, go further with this uh, project. Coal power plants will be closed in 2030. That's also a, a, a statement made in the in the in the government agreement. And uh, as I told you before, uh, the solar energy will always play a significant contribution. Um, to have an overview over the Dutch market, uh, for the SE projects, there is, as I already mentioned, a pipeline of five gigawatt uh, what has to be built, uh, what already is approved, but has to be built. To give you one other uh, um, uh, fig figure uh, for the net metering market, for the uh, residential market, my uh, expectations for the next four or five years will be that it will be about 500 megawatt each year. And for the uh, realization of the SDE projects, my ge best guess so far is two gigawatt for the next uh, yeah, that, that's an addition to uh, what uh, what is built already. Uh, as I told you, for the SD Plus 7, 2017, uh, four to four and a half gigawatt will be uh, uh, approved. Um, the an important point is for some of you that also housing associations uh, important in Holland have uh, about uh, 45 percent of all the houses are. Uh, owned by housing associations will speed up uh, uh, PV on their assets. And um, the SDE, um, I'm quite optimistic. Uh, I can imagine that uh, Robert has to be a little bit cautious, but uh, I'm quite sure that at least to 2020, this uh, SDE plus will uh, um, uh, will continue because uh, it uh, it's found very successful. Maybe one of the biggest successes uh, last uh, uh, month was, uh, let's say, that uh, the um, uh, wind offshore is already the last project is without any subsidy, and that stimulates also the working of the belief in the working of the SE Plus uh, project. Um, another important point is that more and more authorities on all levels in our society are looking now. At, actively for spatial opportunities for large-scale PV project. That's important because they are the, uh, the, the, the authorities who give the permits uh, for building this uh, large-scale PV project. And at, um, at the end, it's good to say that we are looking also very closely to combination of projects, wind and solar. Uh, maybe there will be in the next future even a, a, a separate category in the SD+, because it's very important to have uh, this combination and has a lot of advantages, not only in connecting to the grid, but also as a, um, a market uh, uh, asset and, and a better price for your um, for your uh, uh, power when it can be combined. Uh, what are our expectations uh, to summarize? Um, uh, we. Uh, yeah, we think the the market will grow, and also in the different uh, uh, categories, uh, both for residential, there will be a, a very slow grow, I guess. Uh, but especially in um, in the SE project, we expect uh, 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 quite a high grow. And uh, sorry, uh, and these are the numbers. Of course, it's it's a, an, an estimate. Uh, but as you can see, the solar parks will not. Um, uh, grow further than I guess one gigawatt a year because we have not that much room in our country and I think this will be rate limiting at a, at a, at a certain moment. And the last uh, slide I show you here is the estimate of the installed base capacity. Uh, we think that in 2023 and uh, there will be uh, more than 20, 20 uh, gigawatt installed. It's an optimistic uh, 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 view, I, get, I, I agree, but I think we need it when we will come in 2050 to independency uh, of uh, uh, fossil fuels uh, for our country. And that's uh, one of the reasons I'm quite optimistic uh, about uh, the total installed capacity the next year. We made such slides also for 2030. Uh, and um, uh, then you will see 
be uh, able to grow to more than 50 uh, gigawatt. Um, the last slide. Thank you. This is my yeah, uh, for, for further information. But uh, you have mentioned uh, uh, Robert has mentioned already the English uh, side. It's very uh, uh, it's, it has a lot of information. And when you need Dutch partnerships, uh, uh, ask me. Maybe we can uh, combine you with one of our uh, members or other parties uh, active in solar energy in Holland. Thank you. Thank you, Jaap, for a very uh, good presentation on what's happening in the Dutch market. So indeed, uh, if you want to find partners, they can contact you. Uh, another opportunity, of, of course, on the 17th of May, where we, we expect uh, 300 people to take part. So that will also be a nice opportunity to meet all those stakeholders in person. Um, yeah, so, uh, Jaap, if you take that from your perspective from Holland Solar, what uh, kind of partners would the Dutch uh, organizations be looking for if you, um, yeah, looking at all the foreigners with an interest? Yes, I think we need uh, uh, EPCists, uh, we need hands. Uh, let's say that will be a uh, also a rate limiting factor for the development of uh, renewable energies in general, but uh, uh, specific also for solar. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, uh, also uh, project development are, are welcome, but I recommend them very, very uh, uh, much to, to find Dutch partner because our system and our uh, network is also different from, from other networks and it's uh, important to have uh, Dutch partners. Yeah, so, so especially if you want to get in touch with these local governments, which you say are playing a more and more important role. Um, you need a Dutch partner to get in touch with these local governments, right? Yes, yes, and, and not only for the for the authorities, for the local governments, but also for the network companies, etc. It's important to know the the Dutch market and how it's structured. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, what else do you see as the main challenges in the market um, in, in the Netherlands? You, you talked about the hands, uh, so we need EPC capacity. Uh, are there other things or issues that you see as uh, main challenges to develop the, the Dutch market further? Yeah, more and more the the space will be a rate limiting factor in Holland, as I told you also uh, with my uh, estimate of the of the solar parks. And but on the other hand, we have a lot of uh, water, of course, and uh, there are is even now a, a pilot for uh, PV on uh, on the North Sea. Uh, I think uh, in our country, with not that much uh, room, uh, we need uh, also this type of. Um, uh, of use of uh, of the space and another one is maybe in the next future uh, maybe there are people who are have experience with it the, let's say the double use of um, of, of of space and uh, especially the double use of uh, agriculture and solar would be very interesting in a country uh, like Holland with a lot of uh, agriculture activities okay there are some questions coming in uh, yep um, and um... One is them. Uh, one listener was very much aware of your presentation and the, your graphs that you presented. And in the in the graph you showed on the 2017-2023 volumes uh, for for solar. Uh, for 2017, apparently you marked you 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 presented more than one gigawatt, whereas some um, other people and the CBS, the Statistical Authority, uh, expect 700 to 730. So. Is that a mistake, or do you really expect that the actual number of 2017 is more than one gigawatt? I'm quite sure that it will be more than one gigawatt, and that's also because there are several big projects on uh, coming. I hope next month, next week even, the, the project of 103 megawatt you showed in your list of big projects will start, and uh, 100 megawatt what is in the, uh, uh, a significant contribution there to this market, but also the market, uh, market of, uh, uh, let's say, the residential market is uh, is growing, and uh, as I said, also the the housing uh, associations are uh, aware that it's the most easiest the easiest way to uh, get more renewables on their assets, uh, the solar. Uh, the, this. I think all these markets will contribute. 
And this year it was 850, uh, and uh, I know CBS said 700, but uh, we are quite sure it's eight, it was 850, and I'm quite sure it will be over one gigawatt in this year. Yeah. Um, yeah, you were also mem mentioning that uh, there is uh, a certain there is a limited growth of uh, the limited capacity for ground-based systems in the Netherlands. Um, but still, over the years, you expect some growth. Um, so the room is there. But how do how, how do you think it will develop? Do we re will we reach a limit uh, very soon? No, I don't think so. Uh, but let's say we have to to find uh, on an intelligent way space where it can be done. Uh, there's a lot of room what can be used, uh, double used. Eh? Uh, also along the in infrastructure, dikes and, and roads, and I can even say that uh, a lot of parties uh, uh, lead it by uh, the Rijkswaterstaat, the State Department of Water, uh, of Road and Water Management, they have an active pro process to look in their assets for places where it can be developed. And I hope this uh, will speed up uh, uh, the places where it can be done and not only the easy way to go to the free land and the agricultural land, uh, but also to, to, to look to these places where it uh, can be combined with, uh, with other necessary uh, infra infrastructure or other functions, uh, what, uh, what can be double used uh, the space. Um. So you have also a question that came in is uh, you said that solar will uh, play a significant role to reduce the 49% greenhouse gas emission uh, reductions. Um, how large do you expect this contribution will be? Let's say we we made an estimate for, for 2050 when we want to be uh, totally uh, 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 independent of fuel, fuel, uh, fossil fuels. I think it will be then between around 25-30% of all the energy, yeah? because I also stated a lot of discussions now in Holland is ongoing about uh, transport and about heat uh, changing to uh, more electricity. Uh, and uh, also I saw today uh, Tenet, that's the TSO in Holland, they expect to uh, 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 electricity use uh, will double in the in the in the, in the next uh, uh, 15, 20 years, and that's due to this uh, movement of uh, heat and electricity, uh, for heat and mobility, what uh, will be more and more electric electrical. Yeah. Okay, that's an amazing uh, number. I, I was not aware of that. Um, yeah, yeah, there is also a question coming in very specific on uh, your experience with the uh, Wabo. Which is a Dutch uh, law related to the um, and yeah this, the the local circumstances the local um, environment um, and in is PV well understood by local authorities and um, will they easily give this per this permit? What is your experience? Yeah, let's say um, I can give two answers. Of course, there are some who are not aware that uh, the transition to renewables uh, uh, does, uh, will, will uh, need quite uh, a lot of space. So there is a lot of difficulty sometimes, but other uh, municipalities are very much aware that it, it will uh, ask uh, space for, uh, for renewables. And there it's, 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 that's one part of the, uh, the, the answer. And the second part is that, of course, it's necessary to come in contact with the local people as well and to offer maybe sometimes or possibilities to participate in part of of a big project for example to speed up the process of uh, acceptance and that's typically ongoing now everywhere in, in in holland but as i said there are already 200 megawatt projects already approved also by the local uh, authorities it's uh, uh, you see, there is there is an, an awareness in in on, on a lot of places that it's necessary not only to use the 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 roofs of the of houses we prefer, of course, and the roof of the industry, and the second part is the double use of of uh, of uh, uh, the space is also important and has to be uh, promoted. 
but we need also uh, solar parks in on, on areas which are now uh, uh, used for agriculture yeah all right understood um we'll come close to the end of the webinar i have uh, one or two questions for robert and one for yap uh, maybe you have to end with you um you talked about the the plan or the the forecast from tenet double use of electricity that raises the question whether the grid capacity is sufficient to accommodate all these pv systems and uh, yeah and whether the dnos uh, the dso's have uh, have a sufficient capacity to build all these grid connections uh, with so many applications coming in the answer is clearly no but uh, they need of course uh, uh, to do investments and that's also very important uh, to come in a, in a very early stage of a project in contact with this uh, t the, the DSOs. And uh, if uh, somebody has problems with that, uh, uh, contact us because uh, we have close contact with them. And we are looking also together with the ministry and uh, the TSO and the DSO uh, how we can solve this uh, uh, this turnaround of the uh, energy sourcing, uh, not from uh, top down to bottom up. And uh, but of course it's a challenge. Okay. Uh, very well, um, Robert, are you still uh, there? Robert, can yes, you hear I me? Am. Okay, very good. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, Robert. Uh, Robert um, there's a specific question coming in related to the correction amount published each year. Um, where is this based on? What what is this based on? Um, the correction amount for um, grid delivery, I guess. Uh, um, I, that... um, well, we we now got two correction amounts. Uh, one is for own use, and one is for uh, grid delivery. Um, the correction amount for uh, grid delivery is based on the APX. And then uh, there are also a component of uh, profile cost and on balance cost. Okay, and and, and um, where is this based upon? What is this based upon? This uh, this this amount? How has it been uh, determined every year? Um, ECN does a, a forecast of what they think it it will be worth in the, in the coming year. And after that uh, year is passed, um, then they will see if they were right or um, it has to be changed a bit. Um, but it's based on the um, AP, uh, APX market. It's like the, the um, energy trade market. And then there's a, a factor of a profile and on balance cost that um, will determine the high height of the uh, correction amount. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I think we're running out of time, uh, and so we have to close uh, the, the the webinar. Um, maybe good for you to know that uh, I showed you before our upcoming events. But the most important one for you is, of course, the the 17th of May, the uh, event in Utrecht, the Netherlands, where you meet all the stakeholders. Uh, it's very likely that Robert will be there. Jaap is at least uh, in in any case will be there. He will be in, in joining a panel. So. Um, the, you can approach them uh, um, and, and have, you know, ask them further questions that you might have related to this webinar. Um, that's, I think, for now all. I thank you very much for your participation. I would like to thank uh, Jaap and Robert. They cannot hear us uh, clap our hands uh, and, and thank us. Uh, thank you for your contributions. But um, I very much appreciate that you were willing to, uh, to join this webinar and give a presentation. Thanks from my side, and I think also on behalf of all the participants um, for your contributions. Thank you very much, and recordings will be available on the website, including the slides. And I look forward to meeting you on the 17th of May in Utrecht. Bye-bye.